Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, is a haunted mansion that is inhabited by ghosts and was built by a frightened woman, inspired by madness. It has been featured on Ghost Hunters and Most Haunted. Stephen King based his book Rose Red on the story of this house and its owner, Sarah Winchester. The Winchester Mystery House is one of the most famous haunted houses in America. It was built by a woman named Sarah Winchester back in 1884, and the strangest thing about it is that the number of rooms it contains is a mystery. Sarah Winchester's husband invented the Winchester rifle and made his family very rich, but Sarah believed that a curse had been placed on her family. Her only daughter, Annie, died from marasmus, and her husband died from pulmonary tuberculosis. Mrs. Winchester was so stunned by the tragedy that she fell into a coma. Finally, she recovered and decided to visit a medium and contacted the spirit of her dead husband. According to Sarah Winchester, the medium held a seance and her husband's ghost revealed that there was only one way to lift the curse that had been placed on her. Sarah believed that the deaths of her husband and daughter were caused by ghosts, the ghosts of people who had been killed with the destructive rifles created by her husband. The only way to appease these evil spirits and stop the curse from killing her was to keep building the house. If she stopped building, she was convinced that she would die. Sarah Winchester's husband had left her a huge fortune and she used this vast wealth to continuously build the house for 38 years. Winchester Mystery House began to take on a strange and twisted shape. There were no blueprints and no master plan for how the house was supposed to look. Sarah didn't care what it looked like. She just knew that she needed to keep building. The result was both bizarre and beautiful. Most people thought that Sarah had lost her mind. As the years went by, Winchester House continued to grow. Rooms were added to rooms, doors were joined to windows, levels turned into towers and peaks, and the place eventually grew to a height of seven stories. There were stairs that led nowhere, rooms built inside other rooms, open holes in the middle of floors, chimneys that served no purpose, and closets that opened onto walls. Sarah Winchester was also obsessed with the number 13. The windows contained 13 panes of glass, the walls had 13 panels, the floors contained 13 wooden planks, the rooms had 13 windows, and every staircase had 13 steps. The design of Winchester House was supposed to confuse the evil spirits and ghosts that were haunting Sarah. She designed a house that was really a giant maze where she felt she could hide from the spirits. Sarah lived a lonely life in the solitude of Winchester House. Her only friends were the servants who worked for her and the builders who constructed her home. At night, she would wander the darkened hallways of the old mansion, trying to avoid running into the ghosts. Sarah Winchester died in her sleep in 1922 at the age of 83. Many people believe that her ghost now haunts Winchester House, trapped there for all eternity with the evil spirits that terrified her in life. In the years since the house was open to the public, employees and visitors claim to have encountered paranormal activity. People hear mysterious footsteps, doors banging open and closed on their own, the whispering of strange disembodied voices, windows that suddenly shatter and doorknobs that turn by themselves. Summer Wind is a haunted house in Wisconsin that has a terrifying history. It is often called the most haunted mansion in the world. Read on to discover the details of the haunting of Summer Wind. Back in the 1900s, Summer Wind was called Lamont Mansion, and a man called Robert Lamont lived there with his wife. When Mr. Lamont moved into the house, the maids he employed told him that it was haunted, but he was a stubborn man and refused to believe in ghosts and the supernatural. However, Something was about to convince him. One evening, as he and his wife were eating dessert in the kitchen, the door to the basement began to rattle and nearly shook off its hinges. Suddenly, the door burst open and the ghostly form of a man was standing there. Mr. Lamont took one look at the ghost and pulled out a pistol. The ghost swung the door shut and Lamont fired two shots in its direction before fleeing the residence with his wife. The Lamonts abandoned the property that night and never returned. After remaining vacant for some time, the haunted house became the residence of Arnold and Ginger Hinshaw and their six children, who moved into Summerwind during the early 1970s. From the moment they set foot in Summerwind, 
the Hinshaws and their children started to see vague shapes and shadows flickering down the hallways. They also claimed to hear the haunting sounds of muffled voices in the dark and empty rooms. When they would walk inside, the noise would suddenly stop. Summerwind's windows and doors would often open and close on their own. Eventually, Arnold had to resort to nailing all the windows shut. On one occasion, Arnold was just about to get into his car to drive to work when the vehicle suddenly burst into flames. Most alarming of all was the ghostly shape of a black-haired woman that was often seen floating back and forth behind the French doors that led off from the dining room. During renovations on the house, Arnold Hinshaw removed a drawer from a fitted closet and discovered a hidden recess behind it. Shining a flashlight into the recess, he could see what appeared to be the skeletal remains of an animal. The hole was too small for him to fit through, so when his children came home from school, he convinced his daughter Mary to crawl into the recess to see what was lurking inside. Poor Mary squeezed through the narrow opening and then all of a sudden started to scream in horror. She discovered that the remains were not those of an animal. It was actually a human skull with strands of dirty black hair still attached to it. The grisly remains also contained an arm and a portion of a leg. Shortly after the horrifying discovery in the hidden compartment, things started to take a turn for the worse at Summerwind. Arnold slowly began to lose his mind, staying up all night long, playing haunting organ music. His wife, Ginger, pleaded with him to stop, but Arnold claimed the demons in his head demanded that he play. He often crashed the keys on the organ until dawn, frightening his wife and children so badly that they often huddled together in one bedroom, crying and cowering in fear. Within six months of moving into summer wind, Arnold suffered a complete breakdown and Ginger attempted suicide. Arnold was sent to a mental hospital and his wife took the children and went to live with her parents in Wisconsin. The mansion, once again, was left unoccupied, but not for long. Ginger's parents, Henry and Marie Boba, decided to buy Summer Wind House and planned to turn it into a restaurant. Ginger begged them not to buy the disturbing old place, but they refused to listen. When Henry Boba attempted to renovate the house, he suffered countless problems. Every time they tried to measure the rooms, the dimensions changed drastically. It seemed as if Summer Wind was gradually changing shape. After hearing strange voices and seeing ghostly apparitions, builders refused to work on the property. One day, Mr. Boba was in the house on his own when he heard gunshots coming from the kitchen. He rushed downstairs and threw open the kitchen door, but it was empty. He smelled gunpowder in the air, but the only bullet holes he could find were the ones in the basement door, lodged there years before. Mr. Boba was forced to abandon his plans to convert Summerwind into a restaurant and instead sold the building. In 1988, Summerwind was struck by lightning several times, resulting in a fire that destroyed much of the old mansion. Today, only the house's chimney stacks, foundations and stone steps remain. The evil lurking in Summerwind Mansion had finally succeeded in destroying itself. The Red House at Pasir Ris in Singapore is believed to be the most haunted place in the country. Over the years, there have been many reports of dark shadows with glowing eyes, evil laughter, moving statues and crying dolls. The Red House in Pasir Ris has been abandoned for more than four decades and is in a derelict state. The gate is chained with a rusty padlock and there is a sign that reads, Private Property No Trespassing. Two stone Chiling Chinese lions guard the entrance. For many years, rumors circulated around Singapore that the house was haunted. Teenagers would often sneak out at night and explore the Red House. It became a test of courage for a lot of young people. Nobody knows what exactly happened in the Red House all those years ago. It is rumored that there was a mass murder in this infamous property and that the source of all the strange activity. During World War II, the building was a nursery or childcare center. When the Japanese invaded Singapore, the occupants were massacred. Some of the teachers and children were burned alive. They say that if you look closely, you can still see the charred imprints of burned bodies on the walls inside. Years later, the Red House was a residential home and a family lived there. They say that the husband killed the wife and children and buried them under a tree in the backyard. After that, the wife's ghost came back and killed the husband. Ever since then, 
the ghosts of those who died have not been at rest. According to legend, if you go to the Red House after midnight, the stone lions turn their heads and stare at you as you pass by. In order to enter safely, you must feed the two lions by placing sweets in their mouths before going in. Other people light cigarettes and put them into the mouths of the stone lions before going in. They say that if you do this, you must come out before the cigarette burns out. They say you should never try to enter the house if you are wearing any red clothing. Also, there is a belief that you should only go inside in a group that is an even number of people. If you enter with a group that is an odd number, and you look down at your own shadows on the ground, you will see one extra shadow with both arms raised over its head. The Red House is very small inside and it is dark and messy. There's a rattan rocking armchair with a doll sitting on it. They say the chair rocks by itself. Other people say the doll's eyes glow red in the dark. Others have seen it weeping tears of blood. If you dare to take the doll away from the chair, they say you will hear a child crying or even screaming. There have been many reports of evil laughter coming from the house. The house is believed to be haunted by three ghosts, a woman with a red lantern, a young boy and a young girl. They say this is the mother and her two children. Near the big old tree behind the house is where these spirits are often seen. Sometimes people see just white shadows. They say that before entering, if you want to be safe, you should light a joss stick, pray outside the house, then throw two coins to ask for permission to enter. If you get one heads and one tails, it means you may enter. Many people run into trouble when they try to leave the house. Some come down with a fever or severe neck pain. Others have terrifying nightmares afterwards and wake up in a cold sweat. Two teenagers were climbing over the fence when they became entangled in barbed wire that ripped into their flesh. When they managed to free themselves, they were warned to clean off any bloodstains on the fence because evil things within the house can follow your blood and find you later. One night, a group of 20 teenagers went to the Red House. They decided to climb over the gate, but one boy didn't know about the stone lions and didn't leave any offering for them. When he was inside the house, his friends asked him if he was okay. He said, of course, I feel fine. As he said it, blood started pouring out of his mouth. When the group left, the bleeding suddenly stopped but they noticed that the stone lions were facing in the opposite direction. A month later, a horrible accident happened to the boy. A lamppost suddenly fell down and stuck him on the head. He was hospitalized and died at approximately the same time as he had stepped on the lion's head. When another group of teenagers were exploring the house, they noticed the sky started to turn red. Some of them went into the backyard and saw something shiny in the grass. When they went to check it out and pulled back the grass, they found the top of a coffin with a metal plate stating a name and a date of death. Another group of teenagers visited the Red House and one of the girls stepped on the head of the stone lion without making an offering. One of the guys told her to say sorry, but instead she said something disrespectful about the lion. They went inside and looked around. Everything seemed normal at first, but then the girl became very quiet. Her friends assumed she was just scared or tired, but the girl suddenly fainted and they had to carry her back to their chalet. When they finally got there, she started screaming and shouting. The girl was trembling and shaking as though she was having a fit. She lost control of herself and started to bang her head against the walls. One guy quickly ordered the others to hold her down and shout for the evil thing to leave her, but the girl's screams became louder and she became more violent. The guy quickly chanted over her and sprinkled some sort of water with leaves on her. Her friends began praying like crazy and none of them got a wink of sleep that night. Around sunrise, the girl woke up, but she didn't remember anything. The guy said that she offend the evil things in the house. She made them angry, and they wanted to teach her a lesson. There was another gang of teens who went to the house, but they were afraid to venture inside. There was a cold wind blowing and an unnatural silence. The place had an eerie feeling about it that made their hair stand on end. Just then, one of the boys noticed a dark figure standing in one of the windows. Its eyes were glowing red, and it had long, untidy hair. It was a woman, and she just stood there, staring at them. Then she raised her hand and began beckoning to them with a gruesome smile on her face. They didn't want to go in, but they found it almost impossible to resist. At that moment, a police car drove by, and the teenagers ran away. The Red House is a private property, 
and the police are known to patrol the area frequently and prosecute any trespasses. So if you live in Singapore, please do not go near the area and please do not disturb the neighbors.